Marcus Bishop Evangelista, and welcome to another episode of Evangelista Science. In this episode, we're going to talk about cell membrane and cell transport. Let's go ahead and get started. The cell membrane is a barrier, so we talked about some of these organelles last week, and one of the organelles we talked about is the cell membrane. It's a barrier that separates the inside of the cell from the outside of the cell, and it also allows just certain things to pass through that membrane. We'll talk about that more later. And so the fluid mosaic model is used to describe the cell membrane because we need to not think of the cell membrane as this kind of stationary wall that doesn't move. This wall moves all the time. It's got certain components in it that allow it to do that. One, they have cholesterol in there. So these cholesterol allows the membrane to stay fluid. They have these phospholipids, these kind of pink things. We'll talk about those more later. Later. Uh, we have some carbohydrate chains on the outside. What these do is they, they're kind of like flags on the outside of the cell, kind of like markers that help cells identify each other. And we have these protein channels. These help things go in and out of the cell um, by going in through these channels. So let's take a look at what I mean by the cell being really fluid. So here's a video from Dr. Mark Cooper in the, from the University of Washington. And this really shows the fluidity or how the membrane is not this stationary thing. It actually moves around quite often. And it's able to still stay intact, stay together while moving and responding to its environment. And so, let's take a look at this phospholipid bilayer and what it looks like. So we see here, this is a diagram of the phospholipid bilayer. And if we go back, that, that's this, these pink things right here. Notice that we have a two layers. That's why it's called bilayer, meaning two layers. We've got one layer right here, and we've got one layer down here. Now, it turns out the heads are on the outside of the layers, and the tails are kind of sandwiched in the middle of the layers. This is because these phosphate heads, we call them hydrophilic, meaning they really like water. So there's water outside the cell. There's also water inside of the cell. And so they're, they're going to arrange themselves to be facing the water. Now, hydrophobic, we've got these two lipid tails. Now, if you remember, we were talking about macromolecules. Lipids do not mix with water. We call them hydrophobic, meaning they dislike water. They don't want to be around water. Uh, phobia, when you're scared of something, like arachnophobia, you're scared of spiders. So hydrophobic means they are trying to stay away from the water because, remember, the lipids don't mix with water. So they're going to stay on the inside of this sandwich because there's water outside the cell as well as inside of the cell. Now, the cell membrane is selectively permeable, meaning selectively meaning only some things can permeate or go through this plasma membrane. Now here, see we see the lipid bilayer with the hydrophilic heads on the outside and hydrophobic tails on the inside. Now, th some things can go through the membrane, like small molecules, such as these water molecules, can make their way through the membrane pretty easily. But large molecules, such as maybe sugar, cannot go through the membrane. They need help of, uh, we'll see this later, they will need the help of a protein, a channel protein, to kind of go through the plasma membrane. Also, if something is small but it has a charge, has a positive or a negative charge, it's also not going to be able to go through the plasma membrane on its own. So let's talk about two types of transport to get these molecules across this membrane. We've got passive transport and active transport. Passive transport is not going to require energy, and it's going to move things from high to low. So we see here in this picture, we have a high concentration on the outside and a low concentration on the inside. And so this is going to, we're going to we can transport these molecules through passive transport. Also, this is completely free, does not require ener any energy, and we're going to talk about three types. The first type is called simple diffusion. And how this works is it just moves from a high concentration to a low concentration naturally. It doesn't require any energy. It's going to happen naturally. So if I go in the corner of the room and I spray perfume in that corner, there's a high percentage of perfume in that corner and a low percentage everywhere else in the room. Well, if I give it some time, that perfume is slowly going to diffuse uh, from high to low, and it will eventually make it so that there's an even amount of concentration of perfume everywhere in the room. So if we look here, we've got some fat outside the cell, and we also have some fat inside the cell. But we've got more 
We've got more fat on the outside than on the inside, and so which way is it going to move? Remember, simple diffusion is going to move from high to low. So it's going to go from outside to inside. Now, osmosis. Osmosis is just a fancy word. You might have seen the movie Osmosis Jones. But osmosis is just diffusion, just going from high to low. But instead of fat or sugar or salt or whatever molecule, the molecule has to be water. So it's water diffusing across a semi-permeable membrane. And one thing that you have to remember with osmosis is that water will go wherever the solute is. And solute are things like salt, sugar, anything like that. So wherever there is more solute, that's where water is going to go. So we see here an example. This is called a U-tube, not like the platform which you're probably watching this video, but it's a U-shaped tube. We have a lot of, let's just say these are salt, a lot of salt on the right and not a lot of salt on the left. So remember, the water is going to go where the salt is. So since there's a lot of salt on the right, the water is going to make its way across this membrane and into the right side of that U-tube. Because of this, we get different types of solutions. By the way, this is why when you guys were reading that story earlier, hopefully, when you pour salt on an earthworm or a snail or something like that, uh, why they why they die because all the water inside of their bodies are leaving their bodies because remember water goes where the salt is and if there's a lot of salt on the outside of their body the water is going to leave their body and they're going to die so don't do that okay we've got three solutions that we have to talk about the first one is isotonic isotonic is when there's the same amount of salt on the inside as the outside of the cell now people think with isotonic that oh since it's the same that water is not moving at all that's incorrect it's just that the water is moving into the cell and it's moving out of the cell, but it's moving at the same rate. So overall, there is no net movement, but water is still moving. That's an important thing to notice. The next one is hypertonic. That's when there's more salt outside of the cell. So, for example, when you eat a lot of pizza, you get really um, thirsty. That's because pizza is very salty, and so there's a lot of salt on the outside of your cells, and so the water leaves your cells, and since there's no water in your cells, you, you get really thirsty because your body wants more water to try and replenish that water that the cells have lost. The cell is actually going to shrink because water is leaving the cells. The cell is actually going to get really tiny. Hypotonic, the way I remember this is hypotonic gets big like an O. Hypotonic get big like an O. This is when you have a lot of salt inside the cell. So remember, water goes where the salt is, so the water is going to go inside of the cell in this scenario. Facilitated diffusion. If you remember, we were talking about some things cannot go through the membrane because either they are too big or they have a charge on them. So for example, sugar. Sugar cannot go through this membrane, the phospholipid bilayer, but it can go through by using this protein, this channel protein, it's kind of like a gateway that allows large molecules to pass through. And so we can use, when large molecules diffuse from high to low through a protein, we call that facilitated diffusion. Just like regular diffusion, however, it's being facilitated or it's being helped by one of these proteins. Let's take a look at some problems. Remember, for these problems, you have to pay attention. Where is there more salt? Because wherever there is more salt, that's where the water is going to go. So we've got 80% salt in the cell and 20% salt outside the cell. So remember, water is going to go where the salt is. So since there's more salt inside the cell, water is actually going to go into the cell. The cell is going to get big like an O, and so this is called a hypotonic solution. Let's take a look at another problem. This time, there's more salt outside the cell than inside the cell. Remember, water is going to go wherever there is more salt, and so the water is going to leave the cell in this case, and that cell is going to shrink in size. So we call this a hypertonic solution. So what happens when you get thirsty. So those were examples of passive transport. Let's talk about active transport. Active transport requires actively energy, so it requires energy. And number two, it's going to move things from low to high. If you remember, passive was high to low and it did not require energy. Now active, we're going from low to high, and to do that, we're going to require energy. And this comes in the form of ATP. ATP is the energy of the cell. Let's take a look at some examples. One example is called endocytosis. Endocytosis is kind of like taking a cell in, endo in, endo in. 
it's when we're going to take a large amount of materials and bring them into the cell. The way we do this is through the plasma membrane. So here's the phospholipid bilayer, and it kind of makes like a little divot, and it's going to kind of swallow up that foreign material, and it's going to put it inside of one of these little bubbles called vesicles. Now, if we're engulfing something solid, we call this phagocytosis. And if we're going to engulf something liquid, we are call this pinocytosis. But both of these are a, are a, a version of endocytosis, of taking large materials in. Now, exocytosis, if endocytosis is taking things in, exocytosis is pushing things out. And so in exocytosis, same thing, but backwards. We have a vesicle. The vesicle is going to fuse with the lipid bilayer and it's going to release those wastes out, outside of the cell. Now, um, one thing we did need to talk about is these uh, protein pumps. So with these pumps, what these allow to do is we're going from low concentration to high concentration. We're going to need to put in energy to use ATP to pump these molecules across of the plasma membrane.